Hello and welcome to Pro Audio TV. My name is Markus Warnick. I'm the product specialist for professional audio products in Sony Europe. And I'd like to talk to you uh, today about the new DWX N series, the third generation of Sony's digital wireless microphones. Um, before we start um, looking on the hardware and on the software and what's new, uh, let's talk about a little bit why digital. Um, as you know, we have wireless microphones uh, uh, working on analog FM modulation since uh, over 50 years. It's working well, you know to handle it, and um, um, the question is why we want to switch to digital, what is the pro and what is the cons uh, about this technology. Um, the idea, as we start in 2003, 4 um, think about what we can do better on a digital uh, version of the uh, wireless microphones, the idea was to have a better audio quality. So that was the main reason um, to start discussion what can be different on the next uh, version of uh, the radio microphone systems. So the better audio quality is the biggest driver for this new system. Um, and why it is? Um, the point is we can do a 24-bit in the newest version, 96 kilohertz AD conversion, and we have a frequency range from 10 hertz to 22 kilohertz, which is plus minus half a dB, a very linear frequency range. The result you get is phase stable, uh, you have a much better dynamic range. So overall, with the digital system, you get very, very close to a cabled microphone. Um, if you just test it, one, two, three, and check, check, um, you, will don't, you don't hear a, a big difference. But uh, I think, or my experience is, if you use a digital system for some weeks or some months, and then you go back to your analog system, you will mention the big difference and you will love your digital system. Uh, it gives you much more flexibility and much more freedom to use the microphone you like and the audio quality you like. Um, uh, the other point is that, um, as you know, we have lost a lot of uh, frequency range in the band which we could use for wireless microphones. So it was a long time, 470 to around 900 megahertz. And in 2010, uh, in some countries a little bit earlier or later, uh, we have lost uh, 790 to 860 megahertz, which was the digital dividend one. Um, and this frequency range goes to 4G, to the telecom guys, um, because we like to use more bandwidth on our mobile phone um, to see the content we produce. Um, the next level is that we will lose 694 to 790, it's a digital dividend too, coming in Europe in the next years. Germany has started as the first country and has sold uh, the frequencies and uh, uh, begin of uh, next year it is not allowed anymore to use frequencies in this range. This comes over Europe and of course it can happen in the future that we're losing some more frequency range. Uh, as you know in the US it is just 470 to 600 megahertz. So uh, with the FM modulation you get the problem of interferences, um, you get problems of intermodulation, so you have to calculate what is which frequency I can use if I have a multiple channel system. Um, and your, let's say, um, spectrum efficiency is not very good. So you need a big band pitch if you have 24, 48 or 64 channels. And this is where digital comes in. Digital technology is much, much more spectral efficiency. Um, with the Sony one, you can use up to 20 channels in one 8 megahertz TV channel. Um, and you can use simultaneous channels uh, in a higher quantity. So let's say you can use channel 33, 34 and 35 and with these 24 megahertz you can have up to 60 channels simultaneous running in a very small bandwidth. So that is another uh, advantage of the digital technology. Um, if you have uh, to drive uh, more than 24 or 48 channels. Um, there is no real limitation of this. We see this later in the scan. If you like to use 200 channels and you have more bandwidth available, you can switch on 200 channels. No problem uh, with this. Um, um, let's look what we have here uh, on the hardware side. Um, what you see here is the uh, part of the range which is uh, made for theater, ob wans broadcast, congress center, so more or less for fixed installation or for life. It's the 19-inch rack receiver, is the handheld and the body pack. Um, Let's start with the body pack. It is 
um, 125 grams magnesium housing body pack, very small, very thin, uh, with a very flexible antenna. It has two batteries, AA type batteries or LR6 batteries. Uh, we use or we prefer to use for our customers um, rechargeable ones, which is a nickel metallic breed. In this case, it's the NLU Pro, which runs up to eight and a half hours with two batteries. Um, if you look on the handheld, it is uh, there is no knob outside, there is no switch outside, no display, everything is in. Just open it with this 50 degree turn and then you can see the display and the knobs and the on-off switch. Um, the DWM02, that's the name of the uh, microphone, the digital wireless microphone version 2, has a universal mount. If you like to use Sony capsules, then uh, you have three versions, the C31, a condenser type, a F41, a dynamic hypercardioid, and an um, F32, which is a cardioid one. But if you like to use other microphones, it's very simple because this universal mount um, is compatible with every other universal mount which you know under uh, the label of Shure. So every Shure compatible capsule uh, can be directly mounted on the Sony one. And if you have some adapters like this one here, then you can use Sennheiser 5000 series or Neumann. And uh, if you have another adapter which is available on the market, then you can use, of course, of course, the 9000 and 2000 series from Sennheiser very easily. In this case, the 835 dynamic capsule. Um, so the handheld can be used with over 50 different capsules worldwide and uh, is universal um, transmitter. Um, if you come to the receiver, it's a two channel, one unit high receiver and it has two independent channels. So it's a true diversity system, four receiver RF front ends and side, which gives you two um, audio outputs and every channel has its own display and its own section um, for, for use. And of course, there is a universal um, system-wide setup uh, on the, under the utility button to um, change the parameters for the receiver. It has different outputs. There is uh, two XLRs for analog output and there are four AES-EBU outputs, two on BNC and two on XLR. Um, there's also two antenna, in, uh, two antenna inputs for A and B diversity, but also uh, an active splitter for daisy chain up to eight receivers, up to 16 channels um, as the loop on the backside of the uh, receiver. Um, yeah, let's look a little bit what we can do uh, with the system. Um, of course, here is a computer, there is an Ether network behind, uh, we have two UHF antennas and we have a remote antenna, the RMU1, which can be connected uh, over Ethernet um, to control the system, which uh, this function we named cross remote. I'll explain this in a minute what we can do with cross remote. If you have no computer available, of course, you can do everything directly on the receiver. So the computer is an option, but it's not necessary to drive the system. And of course, if the Ethernet system is not working, your system is still running because UHF and the Ethernet part, the control part, are complete separated systems um, to work on. Um, let's see what we do. I mean, I will take the body pack and switch it on. And you see the nice OLED display, uh, which shows you your audio input. Uh, it shows you the cross remote function, shows your name. And by pressing plus and minus, you can go to the different uh, menu sections and change uh, parameters in the way you like. There is also in the box a soft case, which protects your body pack a little bit. And here you have the belt clip, which you can turn in the way you like. Um, the antenna is a standard SMA connector. Um, your, every SMA antenna is possible to use. Of course, the Sony one is very flexible. Don't do this with your antenna 
Um, the Sony is a very good one, so uh, if you like to use a stiffer one from another manufacturer, no problem. The input is, since we have Sony radio mics, a four-pin Hyros connector, um, which look like this. It's a Bionet connector, which is uh, working well. So the connector is, is rough, is tough, is good. You can't break it, but it is a little bit bigger than the other versions on the market. If you like to have a Lemo version, you can get a Lemo modification kit and then you can use the body pack uh, with your favorite mics on the Lemo uh, version. Uh, the body pack gives you out 5 volt phantom power, which is good enough uh, for the most other mics on the market. And of course, if you don't like uh, the Sony ones, you can use, as an example here, the DPA adapter and then they have the micro dot and you can use DPA headsets, in this case um, a Define, which is working well. Um, yeah, let's see what we get if we put some microphone on. I will put it here on the table and then you can see what's going on. So uh, uh, the computer is locked. Okay, so what you see is here on the screen and here on the software, and let's focus on the software, uh, you see your audio input level, the green LED bar, let's say. Um, it shows you RF level, QL is quality level, it's the digital data rate, and the name, and it shows you the audio input. The audio input is the level on the AD converter inside the body pack or inside the transmitter. So uh, we transmit this in a metadata. Uh, it is even working if you have no uh, network available. Uh, you see it also on the receiver. And uh, it gives you a good idea what's going on on your audio side. Yeah? It shows you first, okay, I have audio on my device input. It shows you also, because it's visible on the screen here, that your transmission is running well. And it shows you that you have some output on your receiver. So it shows you that the full transmission chain is working well. Um, if you have the latest software version, we have also here a mute button. If you press the mute button, you will see that the output is muted, shows here red flashing muting, but you still see there is some input on my device and there is audio input um, coming over the transmission to the receiver, but I have no audio because the output is muted. What you see also here is your battery, which shows you in this moment is full. Here is an antenna symbol, which shows you that we transmit something, and there is an L for low, which means we are working with one milliwatt at the moment. So L is low, one milliwatt, M is middle, 10 milliwatt, and H is high for 50 milliwatt. I have to say the 50 milliwatt is not, ne not really necessary. We do everything in all stadiums, in all theaters, and operas, we're doing 10 milliwatt. The 50 milliwatt is more for ENG if you are 200 meters away or more. Um, then you can use the 50s. In the normal situation, the 10 milliwatt has the same efficiency than 50 milliwatt analog. And of course, the latest, uh, the last icon is the uh, remote control setup. So it shows you, yes, it is linked, and it shows you that the, the uh, level of the receiver is, uh, the level of the signal is, is great. Um, so what we can do with the remote, or what is the idea of the remote? Cross remote is a function which is complete independent from the UHF area. What we do is we set up a 2.4 gigahertz network which works with a protocol named ZigBee. Um, it's a machine protocol which control uh, over an extra remote unit the, uh, the transmitters. So the computer is doing something or the receiver is doing something and it will be sent out over this remote unit to the transmitters and if I do something on the transmitter, it gives the information over the cross-remote network to the computer. So wherever you are, you have a full remote system, which gives you the choice to change anything you can change on the transmitter without touching the artist. So you can sit in your OB-WAN or you can sit on your front of house area and you control your devices on stage without touching these guys or running behind them. And of course, you can set up up to nine antennas uh, of these remote antennas you can set up an antenna in the wardrobe area, you can set up an antenna in the um, 
In the cafeteria area, you can do some antennas behind stage, on stage, or close to your front of house area. So wherever your artist is running around, you can control him without knowing where he really is. This is a fantastic benefit, um, because a fantastic feature, sorry, because it gives you a great benefit if you are on a, uh, if you are um, far away from your artist. Let's think on a theater where you have normally a small room on the end um, of the seating area. And if you want to go on stage, you have to run around the house uh, or running 200 meters um, to the stage to change something on your body packs. You can do this by cross remote. So cross remote is a very, very helpful feature for you to control your system and to find out what's going on without touching the artist. The second point is that we have done in the software a lot of information about the RF setup. So what you see here is uh, what I have done a moment before is a scan. So uh, the spectrum analyzer shows you everything between 470 and um, 710 megahertz, which is the wideband of the receiver. So the receiver covers all these frequencies and it shows you scans from yesterday, from an hour ago, or from a minute before. You can overlay up to two scans, so you can compare scans, and you see what's going on. And every green line we see here is a free available channel where you can use radio microphones from Sony. And of course, the yellow one is typical uh, digital terrestrial television, DTT or DVBT, um, which shows you no chance to use a radio mic on this frequency. Um, this is a static situation, so you do a scan and you see what happens the minutes before, but you can also go to the RF chart uh, grapher, which is a tool which online grabs your RF signal. So let's see here, uh, channel one, that's the body pack. You see the green line, the green line is the level of the quality rate. So we transmit 256 kilobit uh, data rate and we receive everything in a perfect way. So the green line is stable. And you see also here in blue, white and red, diversity maximum, diversity minimum and diversity average. So it shows you what your system is doing on the RF, on the RF side. If I move the body pack around, you will see that the level changed. Uh, dramatically and this is recorded for up to 82 channels for up to 24 hours. So without having a microphone on, because we're doing modulation all the time on the digital side, you can run around on stage and see what is your system doing uh, and this is what we call a walk test. But you don't have to talk and nobody has to listen on the other side. It is still the signal there. Can you hear me? Can you understand me? No, you just walk around and you see what your system is doing. Um, you can zoom in and zoom out. Um, so if you see here, that was what we have done in the last hours. And uh, if you zoom in, you can zoom up to, um, up to one second from division to division. And then you see in a really good way what your error signal is doing. Yeah? So this can be done for up to 82 channels and you can control up to 82 channels. Um, if you are a little bit familiar with the system after some times, you will understand what this graph is showing to you. You understand directly why you see some loss of the, of the uh, data rate or you understand which loss is audible and which not. Because we have an error correction inside and we have some random density data inside, not every time you get a drop here, which means you lost the packages, um, is not all the time that you have some audio dropouts. It is normal that you lost the package over some time, that's absolutely okay, but if you have an audio dropout, this is very, very deep here, the green dip, and um, yeah, you will find out this after some times and you understand what is the system doing. Um, so RF chart grapher, a fantastic feature uh, for controlling your RF setup. Uh, let's do it back here. The other thing is that you have also the RF chart analyzer, which is the same thing uh, like, the, like the grapher, but here you can recall, you can recall um, some graphs. So let's open some uh, files 
I have recorded before. I don't know what it is. It's uh, made in the Colosseum in London. Ah, yeah, see what we see. So let's make it bigger. Fantastic example. Um, what you see here is that we have a really, really low level on the antenna. Yeah, and if it's going under 20 dB microvolt, you will see that we have some package loss, which is not audible. The package loss is very, very small, but you see that the signal noise version is too low. If you are in a situation where the signal noise version is good between antenna level and noise, you see that the system is running absolutely stable. Again, here we go down under 20, which is a typical situation where we have less than 20 dB signal noise ratio, and then it starts that you see some dropouts. Yeah, that is a typical situation for this. And of course, if you want to go deeper inside, and let's make it a little bit bigger here, um, you can go to settings and say, don't show me the average of the diversity, show me the minimum of the antenna level. And then you see that the minimum is really between low, uh, between zero and 10. And that's why we have this package loss here. So this is a fantastic example. So you can record every show and you can find out after the show what's going on with your RF level or if you are, let's say, on TV stations and you have also a picture uh, on top of your recording here, then you can see what the artist has done on stage in this moment where you see a dropout. Maybe is behind some metal plates or maybe he was um, struggling and was falling down. Things like this happens. And then you see what the signal is doing here on your RF chart analyzer. Fantastic tool which gives you a great advantage in understanding what's going on. I mean, all these things we do because we know that using radio mics will be more complicated in the future. Yeah, it's not like years ago that you switch something on, find the frequency, and the system is doing a job. In the future, we will see that so many wireless users are around you that you always get in a moment sometimes some distortions and then you have to react very quickly and that's where the system helps you to do your job. So you can secure very, in a very good way that the system is running uh, without breaking the show. Um, if you like to change something over cross remote, you go on the channel you like to change, um, use left mouse button, right mouse button, sorry, say property, and then you see channel one, channel two, and utility. Utility is what are the main features of the receiver. So it's the input gain on the antenna, it's the frequency range you like to use. So in this case, uh, we can use here channel 21 to 29, or channel 33 to 40, or 42 to 50. That is the range the receiver cover. Um, you can switch on phantom power for the antennas. It's the first receiver, that's why we have the antennas in the first one. You can um, ampli switch on the amplifier and the antennas. Uh, by the way, we have 9 volt for plus 10 dB and we have 12 volt for plus 18 dB. That gives you uh, uh, a good gain for up to 200 meter cable loss compensation. A nice feature. So, and then you can go to the channel one and you see the TV channel you use, the frequency, you can do an active channel scan, you can do a clear channel scan, you can switch on a, a protected mode, uh, an encryption mode, um, and of course you can switch the ground lift or the analog output and you can change a lot of parameters on your transmitter. Yeah? The first is very simple active sleep means you can put your transmitter in a sleep mode. Arif is off, and audio is off. Still some power consumption is running, but it saves around 50% of the energy um, and you don't have any problems with interferences because the RF is off. Um, the next point is MIG and line level for the body pack and um, then you have an input attenuator which goes from 0 dB. Yeah, we're driving everything on 0 dB full scale. So if you have maximum input here on 0 dB, you have 0 dB full scale on the digital output or plus 24 dB on the analog output. Uh, and then you can put some gain reduction inside, some damping, which is in 3 dB steps to minus 48 dB. And of course, you can switch the input also to line level. And then you have here a clock, a timer, 
which shows one hour and uh, 37 minutes. This is the point that, yeah, we have a battery symbol here which shows you 90, 80, 60, 70, 50 percent, but we don't know exactly what is the energy in an AA battery. So it makes sense to understand the running time of your battery. In this case, with the uh, nickel metal hybrid um, Eneloops, uh, you can go up to eight and a half hours. And if you see now is one hour 37 minutes, which says you can have another seven hour running time. So uh, if you learn how long your batteries you normally use work with these reset, if you put new batteries inside, you get a very, very exact um, idea what's going on with battery lifetime. Um, the power switch lock, of course, yeah, that, that's what we could do if we switch now off the body pack. Um, you see there is a lock symbol here, um, so the customer or the user cannot switch it off. It is always on. And um, the last point is the pairing mode. The pairing mode is to bring uh, the remote function or to set up the remote function between the Ethernet receiver and the body pack. It's the same way like you um, connect your Bluetooth device to your mobile phone or your Bluetooth speaker um, to your mobile phone. It's a pairing process uh, which brings these two things together. Um, that's from the uh, remote side from the transmitter. And um, we have also here an overview, a property list, which shows you all features on all transmitters and all receivers um, in a typical um, like Excel file, um, um, like, like an Excel file. So what you see here is, yeah, we have 60B attenuation, we have MIC input level, we have uh, the naming, so you can change the name if you like. That's all possible in this, in this, uh, in this message, in this uh, property list here. If you say that's too complicated for me, I will not switch here uh, every transmitter in a, in a single way. You can have some group functions. That's here on top. Yeah, It's the group control settings. It's all the settings of the transmitter, like active sleep mode, output power, um, the input gain, the attenuator, uh, the low cut, the phantom power. Of course, body pack and handheld don't have 48 volt, but the plug-on we have has 48 volt phantom power. And it's the timing reset, an internal signal generator, which generates uh, minus 36 dB uh, one kilohertz tone for leveling your mixing device, if you like, and the power switch lock. And the tricky thing of this is that if you use it in a moment where you use it as a group under all tuners, if you put sleep mode, then all transmitters in this group go in sleep mode. But if you just use it in one of the pages, then this function is only available for the transmitter, which is in this page. Let me switch on the second transmitter. Here it is. Yeah. So you see all tuners shows me now two devices on. One is in sleep mode, one is in, one is in uh, online mode. Let's go again and say sleep. It will change now both devices in sleep mode. If I go back now to page number two, sorry, or C number two, or page number four, that we have only one channel. And if I go now and say power safe to active, it's only activated the transmitter, which is in this group or in this scene, what we say. And you see in all tuners, still channel one is in sleep mode. So the idea is that you go during your show from band to band or from scene to scene uh, or from group to group and you use it like a subgroup on your mixing desk. If you activate one of these group control functions here, it's only working on the devices which are, which are visible in this group here. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense. One band is going from stage, you put them on sleep mode, another band is coming, you put all these members of the band in active mode. Or in a theater, a group is going from stage, another group is coming on stage, so you can switch them on and off, or you can change the input gain, or you can change the output power. That's a very simple thing. Um, to do this is very simple. You use a channel and drag and drop it here inside and then you have a second channel or a third or a fifth or whatever. 
It makes sense to do this because if you have an all tuners, sometimes um, if you have really 82 channels here working, this is a very, very complicated graph and you don't know which is really on stage and who's not on stage. So it makes sense to use the scenes or group functions, what we say. That's the uh, a rough overview. Um, and uh, it shows you a little bit that your workflow is changing if you use a digital system. So normally you come on stage, um, you do a scan, you put all the body packs on a table and then you start manual or by infrared syncing uh, the frequency you find out uh, with your devices, with your transmitters. We do it completely different. What we do is we set up the system that every transmitter is connected to one of the channels by cross remote and then we start with a scan. So um, we use the channel plan advisor we start a scan, I have done here a scan, so you see your DVB-T here and you see the green lines, every green line is a free available channel. So um, let's see the first channels here, yeah, it's a little bit too big. Um, so you see the channels, I will go and um, go to the next page and it shows you here all free available frequencies on the right side. Let's go to one of the channels we see here. Ah, here is one. Okay, it's channel, um, it's the channel uh, 22 in TV channel 35. So um, I see here the frequency, it's 584.750 megahertz and the white line shows me where it is. Um, and if I think this is the good frequency for my channel 1, I say that's channel 1. And then with only 500 kilohertz space we can use the next one. And let's say channel 2. And we need only 500 kilohertz space between channels so I can use all the other one in the same way. Yeah. And in the end I say next and now the system starts and changed the frequency on the receiver and the receiver give out of a cross remote the command to the transmitter to change all the frequency. And a second later, you see that the frequency has changed and work on the new frequency. So that is a half automatic process. We don't like to do an automatic process because it is critical if you change the frequency, um, then you have let's say 400 milliseconds an audio drop because we have to initialize the amplifier again. That's why we do it half automatic. Um, so you can decide it when is the best way to do it. If the system shows you that you get some dropouts on the earth chart grapher, then you can decide it some minutes later or some seconds later to change to a new frequency. So uh, you're on channel 2, you see there are some, some problems with the RF you go inside and change the frequency to another one in the free available group. So the system again shows you here the free available channels and you change to a frequency which is maybe far away or close to the old one. Job done. Yeah, this is the, the setup of the system and if you have done this, do you store it as a file? And you say file, save as, um, and um, we say test, yeah, store it, a job done. And if you switch off the system and switch it on the next day, it comes up in the same, in the same way with the same files, but you can go to another setup and push the whole setup like a snapshot of your mixer into the system. So you can change between show and, and, and rehearsal session in a very easy way. Um, so that, that's also a point which is nice to do. So um, you can store different setups and different files for different shows and the maximum time, let's say, for 48 channels is around five minutes to change between the different setups. Um, I think that's a good way um, to understand what we do. It's the first overview uh, of the system. Um, 
We have also an ENG part, which is a mobile receiver and uh, the plug-on, which we show one of the later uh, of the, of an, in another video uh, later on. So thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I hope you understand a little bit what we're doing with the new Sony DWX series. Thank you.